Good morning and welcome to Worship at Martin Luther. We're glad that you're here today together around God's Word as we celebrate Palm Sunday and begin our observation of Holy Week. The order of service is printed out for you in the worship booklet you got on the way in. It begins on page four. It'll also be projected onto the screen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. <laughs> Dear friends in Christ, for five weeks of Lent, we have been preparing for the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. Today, we come together to begin the solemn celebration of Holy Week. Christ entered in triumph into his own city to complete his work as our Messiah, to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Let us remember with devotion his entry that culminated at the empty tomb and follow him with a lively faith. United with him by baptism, we share in his resurrection and new life. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Please stand.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. God, our Father, we remember how Jesus entered Jerusalem and was welcomed as king by those who shouted Hosanna and spread palm branches in his path. Accept our praise and listen to our prayers as we rejoice in our triumphant king, Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. The congregation may be seated. At this time, we continue with our choir anthem from the adult choir and the Nina Lee Lutheran School children.
Please stand. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful God, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I desire your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us, and, is, and, by, and, and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for the great acts of love by which you have redeemed us, through your Son, Jesus Christ. As he was acclaimed by those who scattered their garments and branches of palms in his path, so may we always hail him as our King, and follow him with perfect confidence, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Today's first reading is recorded in Zechariah chapter 9. Here the prophet Zechariah foretells with remarkable accuracy what Jesus would do and how he would ride into Jerusalem to save us from our sins. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Today's second lesson is recorded in Hebrews chapter 12. Here the writer to the Hebrews points us to how Jesus persevered all the way to the cross. And so we, as we follow him, we also persevere and throw off the sin that entangles us and keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. stand for the gospel. 
Today's gospel is recorded in Mark chapter 11 and will serve as the basis for today's sermon. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated for the hymn of the day. That's hymn number 411, right on, right on in majesty. Jesus? That's a big and important question, isn't it? That's a question that people have been wrestling with for a long time. Actually, people were wrestling with that very question on the very first Palm Sunday. As Matthew records these events, he says that people, as they saw Jesus riding in, they took notice and they said, who is this man? That's a question that people have been asking ever since. People continue to ask that question because it is such a big and important question. It's a question that we all need to wrestle with at some point in our lives. Who is Jesus? That's a question that we get an answer to in our gospel lesson for today. And what we see there is that Jesus is the king. Sure, maybe not everyone recognizes him as the king. Maybe he doesn't always look like a king. Maybe he's not always the kind of king that people want. But Jesus is the king. And so today, as we celebrate Palm Sunday, we say, Ride on King Jesus. You see, when someone is the king, typically things go the way that that person wants them to go. People generally listen to what the king has to say and 
they do what the king wants them to do, and as a result, the king is in control of every situation. And in our gospel lesson for today, we see that Jesus is the king who has exactly that kind of power and authority. So I'm going to read just the first few verses of our lesson, and I want you to pay attention to all the details that demonstrate that Jesus is the king who is in complete control of this situation. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Now the first evidence that we see here that Jesus is the king who is in control of this situation is that he knows exactly where he can find this colt. How could he have possibly known that? They didn't have Uber back then. He couldn't just pull out his phone and see the exact location of his ride. So how could he know where this colt was for his disciples to find? The only way that he could know that is that he is true God who knows all things. And so he knew exactly where his disciples could find this colt. And I think that's an important thought to keep in mind as we go through this next week, that Jesus is true God who knows all things, which means that he knows what's going to happen next. And I'm not talking about his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. I'm talking about what happens after that. Jesus knows that as he is riding into Jerusalem, he is going there to die. And yet he continues to ride on because he is on a mission for you. And he is going to do what needs to be done. Because he is the king who is in control of this situation. And so we say, ride on, King Jesus. The next bit of evidence that we get that Jesus is in control of this situation is that this plan of his actually worked. Can you imagine for a second that you saw someone come up who you didn't know and they, they took your car keys and started walking toward your car and then just looked back and said, oh, my friend needs this for a little while. Don't worry, he'll bring it back soon. What would you say? Um, no, uh, give me back my keys. But as we see here, what happens is that the people... Go along with Jesus' plan. They listen to him. Why would they do that? Well, they do that because Jesus is the king who is in control of this situation. And so if Jesus needs a colt, there's going to be someone there who is willing to give him the colt. And that is another good truth for us to remember as we go through this next week. That Jesus is in control. And so we shouldn't think that somehow Jesus was like tricked into being arrested or that he was overpowered and conquered and that's why he was killed. No, Jesus was in control. And because he was in control and because he was on a mission for you to save you, he kept riding on all the way to the cross to save you because he knew what was coming and he was in perfect control because Jesus is the king. And so we say, right on, King Jesus. Since Jesus is the king who is in control of this situation, it makes sense that people would respond the way that they did. Mark records, many people spread their cloaks on the road while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. 
Now, there are so many times in the Gospels when it seems as if people just don't get it. When despite all the things that Jesus had said and done to show people who he was, people just seem not to get it, not to understand who he was or what he was about to do. But not this time. No, this time it seems as if people actually get it. They recognize that Jesus is the Messiah, that he is King David's greatest son, that he had been sent by God to save his people. And so they shout out, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. They shouted his praises. What a wonderful thing. That's something that we would do well to celebrate and continue to emulate still to this day. But Palm Sunday is always kind of a difficult Sunday for me to know how to feel about it. Because I can't help but remember that not everyone came out of the city to shout Jesus' praises. No, I know there were some people who lingered back there, and they lingered there for nefarious purposes including the chief priests, the elders, the teachers of the law, who plotted to kill Jesus. They were so dead set against him that they were willing to do whatever it took, no matter what. Even to the point that when they heard that Jesus had actually raised Lazarus from the dead, they didn't use that as a moment to stop and correct their course. They didn't stop and think, oh, If this guy can raise someone from the dead, maybe he's someone special. Maybe we should listen to him. Instead, they thought, well, I guess we're going to have to kill Lazarus too because we can't have any of that. Despite the fact that Jesus had given them every reason to believe, they refused. They rejected him. They killed him. And that's a sad thing. And maybe this time of year can make us feel a little bit sad too. Because it can be a reminder that not everyone in our city comes out to shout Jesus' praises. No, there are going to be plenty of our people in our community who view Easter as nothing more than an excuse for an egg hunt, if that. There are going to be plenty of our neighbors who do not come to church once this next week, there will be plenty of people who don't know or don't care to celebrate Jesus' victory over death. And that's a sad thing. And maybe you feel sad as you think ahead to this week because you remember how things used to be. Like, for example, you remember the way that your employer used to shut down on Good Friday so that his employees could get to church not how it works anymore, and so you find yourself stuck at work all through Good Friday afternoon. That's kind of a sad thing. Or maybe you feel a little bit sad as you think about Easter Sunday because you remember how things used to be, and you remember how you used to come to Easter Sunday worship with your children, but now the group you come to church with is smaller because... Easter Sunday worship doesn't matter that much to them anymore. And that's a sad thing. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be concerned about those things or that we shouldn't do things to try to address them. There are certain things that we can do to show our concern for those who aren't here. We'll talk about that in a minute. But first, for right now, for just a minute, I want you to let Palm Sunday be Palm Sunday. Today is a glorious day when our King Jesus triumphantly rides into Jerusalem to lay down his life to save us from our sins. What a marvelous thing that is. And so today we celebrate. Today we shout, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Ride on King Jesus. That's what today is all about. But you know what? I find it pretty easy to shout my praises to Jesus when I'm here in church 
or when things are going well in life. But what about when things aren't going well? What about when you get bad news from the doctor? Or when you lose your job? What about when your loved ones get sick and die? Where is King Jesus then? Well, let me tell you, he is riding on to accomplish his mission that he set out for you. Don't think that just for a moment, that just because you can't see Jesus, that he's not still riding on for you. And don't think that because you still have troubles in your life, that somehow Jesus isn't at work to win the battle for you, to give you the victory over all your enemies. Because Jesus has promised that he will fix everything that is wrong in your life. He just hasn't promised to get rid of every problem right now. See, I think the best way that I can picture that is this. This is a picture taken from the top of the Mount of Olives, which is the highest point in the area, which is where Jesus' parade started. Immediately west of the Mount of Olives is what's called the Kidron Valley. The Kidron Valley drops down about 400 feet before rising up again about 300 feet to the city of Jerusalem, which you can see off in the distance there. So think about that for a second. What that means is that as Jesus is riding on in this triumphant procession, he has to travel through the valley. And he would have to travel not only through the literal Kidron Valley, he would also have to travel through the valley of the shadow of death. And so what did Jesus do when he was down at the bottom of the valley at the deepest, darkest point? He rode on. He rode on all the way to the cross to take your sins away. He rode on all the way through the grave to conquer death for you. And now he triumphantly rides on in majesty, guiding all of history to bring you safely home. So what should you do when you are down at the bottom of one of life's deep, dark valleys and things seem so cold and so dark as if you can barely even see the sun? What should you do then? Well, even then, even when it is hard, you can say, ride on, King Jesus. I know that you are with me, and I know that you are at my side, and I know that you are going to give me the victory over my enemies. I know you will see me through this and every situation until I am at home by your side. And so I can say, right on, King Jesus. You see, since Jesus is the king who is riding on to give us the victory over all our enemies, what should we do now? Well, I would suggest that we can maybe imitate what the children did at the beginning of the service today, and we can wave some palm branches. There are only two problems. One is that uh, palm branches are not native to Wisconsin, so you might have a hard time getting your hands on some palm branches. Secondly, you might look a little weird if you like go out into public and just start waving a palm branch around at like festival foods or something you might get some funny looks. So it's a good thing that I'm not talking about literal palm branches, but I think it's still worthwhile for us to think how we can metaphorically wave our palm branches to shout our praises for Jesus today. And there are a lot of ways that you can do that. And you're going to have to think through what, what are the best ways for you to do that in your life. But I'm going to suggest that we can all do something very simple right here and right now to shout Jesus' praises. And it includes something that's much easier for you to get your hands on than a palm branch. It includes getting your hands on one of these. Uh, a phone, right? Um, 
So if you've got your phone on you, go, go ahead and take it out if, if you've got it. Our phones are, are pretty remarkable things, aren't they? Uh, we have the ability with our phones to contact hundreds and hundreds of people in a matter of seconds. It's a power that would have been unfathomable even 20 years ago. Sadly, a lot of people use this power for bad to make people's lives worse. But what if we as Christians used our phones to proclaim Jesus' praises? So I'm going to encourage you to do that right now. If you've got your phone on you and if you have a Facebook account, I'm going to encourage you to go ahead and open up Facebook. Then you can search for Martin Luther Church or whatever church you go to. I know there are people here from other churches. But if you haven't yet, go ahead, like our page, and then click on our page, and you'll see an event there that uh, promotes our Easter services. I'm going to encourage you to RSVP to that event. Go ahead and say you're interested or that you're going. Or if you're going to be out of town, go ahead and share that event so that your friends from out of town can see it. If we all do that, there are going to be a whole lot of people who have the opportunity to hear about Jesus and how he has conquered death for you. And that's a wonderful thing. So I'm going to give you a moment to do that right now if you haven't already. Go ahead, take out your phones and do that. If you don't have your phone on you or if you don't have Facebook, if you don't have Facebook, go ahead, maybe text someone and invite them to join you for Easter worship. Or if you don't have your phone on you, go ahead and just say a quick prayer asking that God would bring people here next week to hear about how Jesus has conquered death. I'm going to stop talking for a moment and let you do that. I can see that some of you are doing that. That's pretty cool. So, good job. All right, that only took a few seconds, and it is a pretty powerful way that we can shout Jesus' praises. I would encourage you to continue to think about how you can shout Jesus' praises throughout the rest of this week, using your phone or whatever gifts that God has given you to share Jesus with other people so that more and more people can come to know who Jesus is. You see, as you leave here today, I want you to know who Jesus is. Jesus is the king. Sure, he may not always look like a king. He may not always be the one that people recognize as king. He may not always be the king that immediately takes away all our troubles. But he is still king. And he is on a mission for you to save you and to bring you home to his side in heaven. And so today, we celebrate. And today we shout, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Ride on, King Jesus. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, Guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father of maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, You may be seated. At this time, we offer our gifts to our Lord Jesus, giving thanks for all that he has done for us. 
Uh, during the offering, I would ask that you would please fill out the friendship register, which is located in each pew along the center aisle. Thank you. stand. Lord Jesus, you are the King of heaven and earth. We join the first Palm Sunday worshipers in praising and glorifying you for coming to this earth to be our Savior. Though you are one with God the Father and Lord of all, you humbled yourself and became one with us. Thank you for living a life of perfect obedience to God's holy law in our place. We praise you for being obedient to death even death on a cross, to redeem us from sin. Cause our voices to blend with those who sang your praises as you rode into Jerusalem. Move us to confess you before others as our Lord. Help us proclaim the message of peace and forgiveness to people of all nations. Use us to assure all people that your blood has cleansed them from sin and set them free from slavery to sin, death, and the devil. Move us to de dedicate all we are and all we have to your glory. Dear Savior, as we walk with you this week toward Calvary, Keep us focused on your purpose for coming into this world and on our calling to spread this wonderful message of salvation. Hear us for your mercy's sake as we join to pray as you have taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our next hymn. That's hymn number 512. All hail the power of Jesus' name.
Please stand. Lord God, ruler of heaven and earth, cleanse our lives and purify our hearts so that your Son, the King of glory, may come in and lead us rejoicing to your heavenly city, where with the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn. morning. Once again, welcome to Martin Luther. We're glad that you're here. We'd invite you to return to worship with us again soon. Uh, we will have plenty of opportunities to gather for worship this coming week. Uh, the, the full schedule is printed in your weekly news on kind of that third page of the weekly news. Uh, you can see the calendar for the week, including services on Monday, Thursday, uh, two different services on Good Friday, an Easter vigil service on Saturday, and then Easter festival service on Sunday. So we would encourage you, um, and certainly love to have you join us for as many of those as you are able to make. Uh, certainly uh, appreciate uh, getting together with God's people uh, as we focus on the death and resurrection of Jesus over this coming week. Uh, to help you with that, we have that uh, Holy Week booklet that you have, uh, that you got on the way in. That has all the services for this coming week in there. Uh, so if you would like to, you can hang on to that book. And you might notice starting on page 10, we have uh, some devotions for you for the next three days. So Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we've got some psalm readings there along with some prayers to help you focus in on Jesus and what he has done for us. I would just ask that if you take those books with you, try to remember to bring them back uh, when you come for the next service so that we don't have to uh, keep running more and more of them. So, um, yeah, I'd certainly encourage you to do that. I'd encourage you to take a look at the other announcements that are printed for you in the weekly news. Uh, we do have um, Easter breakfast next week. There's an announcement about that and how you can get involved with that if you would like to donate um, or if you'd like to come and eat. Uh, that'll start at 8 o'clock next Sunday morning. There I would encourage you to take a look at those other announcements that are printed for you in the weekly news. There is one that uh, did not make it in there um, that, that came rather late in the week, and that is regarding a call to uh, Nina Lutheran School. We had put out a call for a sixth grade teacher for next year. Uh, that's to replace uh, Mrs. Schlieff, uh, who is going to be done now. Um, so we had called Aaron Hartwig, uh, and he has accepted that call. So he will uh, be our teacher for sixth grade for next year. Uh, he is coming from North Fond du Lac, I believe. So um, that's good news, right, that we have um, a sixth grade teacher for next year. Um, and yeah, we praise God for uh, providing us with that. Feel free to greet those who have worshiped with you today. And with that, I wish you a blessed week in the Lord. <laughs>